What's up guys? Welcome back to the clip point today. I actually have a knife to show. Um, and it's probably something you wouldn't have expected me to get. Um, but I'm super stoked about it. It's probably one of my top knives now in my collection. I just really, really love it. I don't know why. I, and I, I guess I do know why and I'll tell you guys in a minute, but it is a case knife. I've been driving this guy to get into case. Now he's like, I've always been in case. Yeah, a little bit, but I am into case, right? I'm into <laughs> slip joints. And yeah. I was so excited when he said that he was going to do this because basically it's been a meme between us that, oh, you don't have a case knife. Hmm, well, that's none of my business. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, that's kind of uh, been where that's been. So there's so many purposes for them. Um, that I think uh, sometimes we leave to just being pocket jewelry, but I think we're selling them a little bit short. So anyway, go ahead. I'm excited. I, I haven't so. seen this yet. I'm excited. I'm actually going to let you do the unboxing of it um, because you know me, I've already unboxed it technically, but I wrapped it all back up so we could, you know, have a little unboxing. Um, it is one of the new black micarta case knives and the design of this knife is just so me as far as case goes, like this is the perfect case knife for me. Honestly, I love it so much that it might be the one case knife that I try to get every model of this style in. Um, but it is the Black Micarta Smooth Copper Lock, the full size. So cool. Let's take a look. Have your way with it. I, I really love it. I can't <laughs> wait to talk about it. Oh, you did a good job wrapping it back up in the paper. Yeah, I tried. I mean, it's not as neat. Not bad. So it's not a textured Micarta. It's smooth. They finished my part up. That's interesting, but it also isn't polished like a high polish. You no, can actually it's not. see, and we'll do some B roll of it. <clears throat> you can actually see a little bit of kind of the white, you know, mm -hmm. in between. You can actually get a little three dimensional kind of a feel to yeah. it. Yeah. I love like just the little design aspects of it the nickel bolsters, the arrowhead mm -hmm. case logo, the worn clip blade. Like it's just, oh wow, it's not polished guys. It is a brushed finish on the bolstering. So that's a little right. unusual for case bolstering. I mean the uh, brushed finish on the, uh, the back as well. Um, these do not have, the large copper locks do not have um, a half stop. It is a lock back, so there's no reason for a half stop. Um, and I'll tell you one thing that's really cool. I hate to take it away from you, Josh. No, you're you good. handed it to me. Um, the, uh, the case double X, and we'll get a little view on that, is the old school case double X. And I really, really dig that. And the badge, I like the big oversized case badge. Mm -hmm. It has kind of a cool old school feel. Yeah. And it's not rounded. This is not a pocket worn. It's nothing like that series. This is almost like a workman's knife. I think that's why I like it is it's not as high polished yeah. as your standard case. Yeah, and this is right down your alley, but boy, you'll be able to get a lot of detail I mean, for Instagram purposes as well. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's awesome. And of course, the one cliff, the, the yeah. pig sticker um, blade is, is excellent. But I, I like that. I like that because it's not smooth and it has shoulders to it. Yeah, that's cool. It's just like, a, I don't know, it's like a gentleman's knife, but it's like a blue collar gentleman's knife in a way. Like, I don't know how else to better explain How about this? It's a, it's a blue collar gentleman's knife who the blue collar guy is doing pretty well, right? Because this <laughs> right. is not budget, right? This is the guy who's been out there and he comes from, you know, a traditional background and he's doing well. Right. And he wants it's a not, nice knife. It's not a high brow case. No. It's very low brow. Like this is a, a knife that would look good with a suit. But it also looked good in a pair of jeans. Like it's uh, yeah, and you're not gonna be afraid to use it because it doesn't have that polish. Right. Everything you do with it will add. To yeah, it. it doesn't have like that mirrored blade like yeah. so many cases. No, do. it's actually got a nice um, grind finish, which is pretty neat. So yeah, I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting it to be kind of to contrast it. Like here in my vest pocket would be this is what you expect from a copper lock normally would be the um, the blue or a red or whatever color bone you might have. Um, and traditionally high polish like this and a clip point blade. That is the worn cliff, which right. to me is a bit more desirable because this is kind of what you always get. Um, but basically the same knife, but this has a high polish and it's a clip point. 
So the finish is different, right? And it's smooth everywhere. And so with this one, every time you carry it, it's going to get a little scratched up. I think, I think it should. I think you should be okay with that because it is a knife. But you know what? This is this is. This it's is funny a shelf because queen. when you're holding these two knives, they match us. Like oh, you got Greg. Oh, I didn't even think about that. With you know, that's his, that's his vest, his very dapper point. look. His knife matches him, and me. I'm just a black t-shirt cap guy, and my knife matches me. Yeah. It's funny. So like, we got the the kind of the red, white, and blue action going on, and my little uh, leather slip here. You see, you can carry this knife without getting it all beat up. See? So this is interesting because this is the first knife. Not the first knife that we've handled. Obviously, Greg owns many case knives. Um, I've handled case knives. This is the first one we've reviewed on the clip points. So it's kind of monumental. Um, and it's the first one going through our clip point grading scale. Um, we've never done a knife like this. That's weird because we're, we're driven toward EDC, tactical-ish, you know, having a clip on your pocket, thumb stud or automatic, some kind of opening mechanism, not a traditional slip joint. Although, if you go to our Instagram page, the clip point, you're going to see my tremendous slip joint collection, right? right? And we blend both worlds. And I think that's part of the reason why we've had some success on Instagram is we've got a little bit of something for everybody, yeah. right? Right, because that's what the EDC world is. And that's really what this knife represents is a bringing of old and new together. And it has a really distinct purpose. Yeah, and you know, they actually have this knife out in several designs, this finish. I know you know more case than I do, but your standard trapper, I believe. Uh, I know one I saw with Seahorse. Could be. Right? I saw Seahorse. In I haven't looked up that particular they have a Tony Bowes. scale um, to see what the um, what the patterns are. But kind of how Case works is they will take whatever scale material or design they have and they will apply that to a certain range of patterns. <clears throat> like you don't always get a Barlow. You don't always get a gun stock. Um, you don't always get it in a tribal lock, right? You're going to have probably a trapper probably you know a copper line I, I know i saw a seahorse and i know i saw the tony bows yeah so that's that's all i, I mean it, that's what's really cool is is that you don't really know what you're gonna get but you do have a nice little variety matter of fact i think case themselves has put out a video about these knives we'll link it below or link it above uh, it'll be linked <laughs> yeah no and i like that and you know it's it's difficult to get my card up with american manufacturers i don't know that I want to necessarily have to go into all of the, the details there, but you'll notice a lot of Chinese stuff has my card and it's really unusual. I don't know if unusual is the right word. Maybe it's a little strong. It's not as commonplace for an American made knife to have my card. So it really ups the special factor for yeah, that, that particular case. That knife. was something that, uh, you know, you and I both were a little bit confused on and shout out to Smoky Mountain mm -hmm. Knifeworks for being able to answer that for us. Um, you know, there's a big long story. We'll go through that in another video like we're really diving into my card and why we don't see it on so many american knives but it seems like it's coming up a little bit more like yeah like i always get excited when i find an american made knife that has my carta because i love my carta right uh but it's just not it's far and few between and i think that's what shouted this out to me is my carta on a case like you don't get any more american than case and my carta on a case knife is just i mean yeah that's like hallowed ground for me yeah you know it's interesting his father-in-law asked me what kind of knife he should get him as a gift and it's funny because it was it was basically uh this knife but kind of all smooth right oh yeah yeah your jig black which is the worn clip yeah right so it's just an interesting thing that um you know you would kind of gravitate toward this blade cool design love it yeah it's cool so ergos you want to go first on the ergos yeah you know um <clears throat> this is so tough for me because it's like the ergos are, um, okay, they're lockback ergos, right? right? It's not, a, it's not um, you know, a traditional sort of EDC right. pocket clip frame lock or whatever it's, with you all gotta, the grooves. You got to take it for what it's worth. For what it's worth when it comes to a slip joint, which I think this is a lockback, right. but you know what I mean. Best it's style. in the slip joint category, okay? Let's keep it real. Um, the ergos on this are excellent. A traditional pocket knife. Yeah, that's better, right? The ergos are excellent on this for a traditional pocket knife. Um, one, because 
where your finger goes, it's a nice stop that you have confidence that if you're piercing and cutting and drawing into something, that it's not going to close and your finger's not going to go up, right? So I like the Ergos. You know what? It is a three and a half finger because it's large. So yeah, I would say I would give it like a, an eight out of ten, which is which is a strong number. But you know what? This is a nearly full hand traditional pocket knife right. that actually has some places for your fingers to go. So I dig it. Yeah, and you know another thing that I like about the Ergos for this, speaking for me, is I like that it has a flat spine that it's not rounded. You know, or what'd you call it? Like the pocket wear or whatever. Pocket worn. Pocket worn. Yeah, which is smooth. Yeah. So, you know, it gives you like a little flat edge. I like to kind of ride my thumb up on a knife, especially if I'm whittling or carving in a piece of fruit or something. Um, so I think I'll agree with eight for me. Um, the micarta adds a little bit of texture. Again, it's it's smooth. It's it not. Does. It doesn't it's, feel slick. So if your hand gets uh -huh. wet, actually right. that will probably work significantly better than bone with jigging or saw cutting. right like it's it's not as rough as micarta like you would assume like you know any of your standard micarta handled knives for edc yeah. or whatever it is smooth but it's not 100 percent smooth yeah so whatever sanding bit. grit they use to make the bolsters it appears to be the same grit that they used which is kind of a a fine but not a polish right right it's a fine grit finish but not a polished finish yeah so eight, eight for me as well um, I do really like this long, like fingernail tab. And I've actually got the polished micarta version. Oh, really? Yeah, nice. Yeah, and so it actually is slick as glass when it's polished. So yeah, because all micarta is is plastic, really. Yeah, it's just a textured plastic. So, um, kind of funny to you know go from you know some of the other knives we reviewed to this, but on a tactical scale, what would you give this knife? Oh well, <clears throat> so. What are the elements of tactical? First element to me is speed and um, length of blade, right. right? Those are the big two elements there. Um, this length of blade is around three inches. Let me look and see the exact measurement. Yeah, it's so about three. it's about three if you were to consider sort of the tang, okay? So it's probably two and three quarter cutting edge. But dude, it's going it's, through whatever yeah, it, it goes it's through. A Make no mistake, this is- uh, And it being a lockback helps. This is what I would call an ENT, ear, nose, and throat. So from a tactical <laughs> standpoint, if you're clever about what you use it for, yeah, it's tactical capable for a slip joint. This is about as tactical as it can be. It's a lockback, right? Overall, though, compared to all knives from a tactical standpoint, you know, it's probably going to be like a four out of ten mm. because it's going to be like, hang on a second, let me get <laughs> yeah. this out of yeah. my pocket. Let me Excuse dig it me, out sir. under my please, zip keys. <laughs> please do not assail me any further. Right. Now. Let me assail you back, right? <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's probably a four out of ten. But when you consider for like lockback kind of function, is probably like an eight out of ten or a nine out of ten. So right. it depends how you look at it. But let's go overall. I think four yeah, out for of sure. ten for me. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Um, the blade's a little short for actual tactical. It needs to be three and a half or better for lethality. Yeah, the biggest drawback for me, as far as a tactical purpose for this, is how long it's going to take you to get it out. Like you said, always. Um, you're gonna have to dig this out from under your keys or your Zippo or you know whatever's in your pocket. Yeah. Um, and it's two handed open. Yes, yeah, it's, it's yeah. yeah, it's two handed open for sure. I mean, you're gonna cut yourself if you open that one hand, or you're mm -hmm. gonna nick something. Yeah, you're, you're not gonna uh, be able to do it. I mean, it is a piercer. It is sharp. That lockback definitely helps. But uh, I, I, probably four out of ten for me. Maybe yeah. even maybe even three and a half. Yeah. We'll just call it three. Yeah, we'll just say three. Yeah, it's just not something I'm gonna pull out. But granted, I mean, if you're carrying this knife, you gotta know, like, you're not carrying a knife for self-defense. Like, if I'm putting this in my pocket, there's something that comes with it. Um, this is not a one-and-done knife. This is not an EDC, um, which we're gonna dive into next. So, yeah. Well, so for me, on the uh, the EDC portion. Um, Man, it's weird because you got to take into account so many factors. Right. Um, this right, this right here for a slip joint is actually too large of a slip joint for EDC for me. I, I actually carry a slip joint every single day, and um, the average size of a slip joint I would carry would be similar to like a buck fifty-five. Um, and and you can see 
And why? Well, look, you should carry at least three knives on you. This is crazy, but you should carry a tactical knife, an EDC knife, and a knife you can hand somebody, right? So you have a knife you can hand somebody in the right. slip joint life, right? And then you have the EDC knife, which is a knife you might hand somebody that you trust, but maybe not. It's more a knife you depend your, you know, you depend on. Yeah, you would use for daily tasks, right? And then you have the tactical knife and. You only hand that to one person. Right. That's yourself and your defense uh -huh. of yourself. So, um, you know, I think it's a little too big, quite frankly, for um, EDC tasks for me. Um, because even if I were to it's whip... It's not that much bigger. This is the difference between <laughs> Josh and myself. As you can see, he's going to show up, you know, in a t-shirt and jeans. And I'm going to show up to work dressed like this. So the environment that I'm in... This is intimidating for office carry. Um, and some mm. guys think it may not be, but it really is because the blade is so long. Um, it's just a little too much for me. So I would say on the uh, the EDC level, most everything about it is EDC-able. It's reasonably lightweight, right? Very functional. Um, it's probably going to be a 5 out of 10 for EDC for me because I wouldn't carry a slip joint of that size. Although right. I own several of this size, I... Frankly, right. rarely ever carry them. Yeah, this is going to be, for me, a knife that always has a buddy. And what I mean by that is if I'm carrying this knife, I'm carrying another knife. Like today, if I was carrying this knife, currently in my pocket, I've got a SOG Kiku, which we'll do another review on. Um, it's Kiku XR. So I'm always going to have, yeah. you know, more of an EDC or a tactical. Like, as an EDC, I, I would carry this as an EDC and still carry a tactical blade. Um... Yeah, but for him, you know, he's thinking of, you know, he's not going to be a lot of times in mixed company, right? Where, you know, you could potentially lose a job. Right, um, for sure. And that's yeah. and that's kind of what's at stake, you know, for a lot of us is, you know, if you, especially in today's society, if somebody yeah. gets intimidated by, you know, the knife right. you whip out, you know, you say, well, you don't understand, this is a slip joint. Like, they have no clue. Yeah, what they don't means. know what that means. Like, so what does that even mean? Okay, so what is a slip joint? Let's throw that in there real quick. Or this is a traditional knife, I guess. We'd like to right. This would be a traditional knife. Yeah. But a slip joint has usually a little detent, a little stop in there. Well, sometimes, yeah, right. So the slip joint here, this is a uh, this is a back pocket. So this is a large knife, and has a half stop. Right. And the reason for that is basically when you go to open and close it, it's such a big blade. It's a safety mechanism. It doesn't go past that half with momentum, so it stops. And then you can momentum close it once you're, you know, know what you're doing. Because to close from here, your finger could still be in the way, what have you. But a slip joint, basically, and I don't know if we can get in here, but maybe we'll do some B-roll. A slip joint essentially has a leaf spring back here. And this spring, as you can see, opens and closes. That puts tension on the knife. So what happens is this knife has little cuts inside the tang that you can't see. And it slips past that joint until it gets slip to a joint. stop, right? And so it's literally a slip joint. Right, well this is more of a lock back. We're using that slip That is joint. a lock back. We use slip joint as a broad category. Yeah, it's more of a... It's a traditional knife, right? right. Because you're gonna carry a slip joint and a lock back probably interchangeably in your daily carry. Right, especially right? in this style of knife. Yeah. So I would carry this as an EDC with a tactical. Um, I would probably give this a six out of 10, just because um, as an everyday carry knife, something that's going to get light use, cutting an apple, cutting a string. And you carry larger, heavier knives than I do on average. And, you know, like if I had to hand this to somebody to use, they're not going to cut their finger off, hopefully, um, because it's not complicated. It's just, a, you know, it's a case. It's, it is what it is. Everybody kind of knows what a case type knife is. Yep. I mean, here's the deal. Every knife that kind of looks like this, everybody assumes it's a case knife until they know otherwise. I mean... It's just the way it goes. So six out of 10 for me, um, only because of the knife type, you know, it doesn't have a pocket clip. It's not easy to pull out of a pocket, um, but it still does what it has to do. Yeah. And then uh, cool factor. And you know, and speaking like, like if I was to go visit a client, I don't mind pulling this out, but again, I'm not in a mixed company where yeah, there's like, like I'm the, my own boss. There's office etiquette versus they don't, ex it's almost like, not that people are actually intimidated by it, but they feel like, you know, they're being disrespected because there's known norms. Right. And anytime there's, you're outside of a known norm in the EDC community, we know all about that, right? Because right? we're outside of the norm. 
Um, you know, kind of the We're sheep dog, out of the, <laughs> the sheep dog mindset, those ideas, right? Um, they feel disrespected and slighted, like you don't care, right? It's, it's almost a societal thing, the yeah. pressure that's put on you. And it you might be where you're from, too, like in Montana, Texas, like oh. it's not. And here, it even would, here, it would be nothing. Even here in Tennessee, it's really nothing, but you still get that in some of these bigger cities, like Nashville, for instance, um, California, you know, places like the New York. Yeah. I mean, it really depends on where you're at. You know, you'll be able to tell it. But I really do enjoy this knife. And honestly, it was bigger than I thought it was going to be. I didn't even look at the size on the box. Yeah, no, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, it's a good size. So, lock back. cool factor. Yeah, cool factor. This is the, what is that, the, uh, the, where you get the stick and get a chance to talk, right? Yeah. That's what this is. So, the, <laughs> um, the cool factor on this, you know, is, I'm so... I'm so nutsoid over this stuff that, you know, I'm like, I want to give every case knife a 10 out of 10. Right, yeah. Because they're all so stinking cool to me. Um, probably with this, I would say the, it is so unusual to have a case knife in this type of finish. It's legitimately a 10 out of 10 and cool factor. But that's from the perspective of a nerd. A regular person would look at this and it's underwhelming. Right. Because it's not fancy. You see, so for me, the... Like, this one would have a different cool factor. This is cooler to me because, first of all, it's the first time they've done this. And secondly, it has a completely different finish than every other one. And, yeah. dude, that is cool. That's, so that's, that's a 10 out of 10. That's me. me as well. I love that. It's so unusual. I like it when I get something that can be a little bit different than yeah. it Well, that's the thing, right? It's, it's unexpected. Yes. It's it's uh, not something you would expect from Case. Right. I mean, yes, Case has made some fixed blade knives that are not as polished. You know, that's more that's of a true. hunting skinning type knife. Um, but as far as folders, like, you know, you think case, you think something highly polished, mirror finish, maybe John Deere on the side, um, John Wayne on the side, something like that. That's true. That's um, true. But because this isn't highly polished and it's subtle, it's just, I mean, it is what it is. Like, it's, it's hard to explain. It's hard to put it on it. But it's just, I don't know. It's 10 out of 10 for me. Um, obviously I bought it, but yeah. just the combination of one clip blade, the size for me, uh, the kind of muted micarta black, you know, it's almost like a flat black, really the, uh, unpolished bolsters. It's, just, it's a, it's a pretty nice. The only thing that I think would make this any better is if the blade would have had a little bit more of an apocalyptic type of finish. Oh, stone washing. Yeah. Case doesn't really get into the stone. No, but that would have really set it off with those satin bolsters like that. Yeah. It would have added That's a little a bit idea. of a texture Case, to that There point. you go, right? Or, you know, maybe even some acid etching or something. Yeah, but. And, and you know what, though? Case case is so innovative. Um, they, you may not think so because you think of it as a traditional knife company, but they really are. And, you know, they've done some collabs with, like, Winkler, um, Southern Grinds. So they can get yeah. that kind of folder game and stuff like that. So there's 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 more there's more to Case than well, meets the eye. And it's this exciting knife, to see them take this some This knife proves that. I mean, yes. honestly, Case has such a kind of monkey on their back with their knife designs because they have such a loyal fan base that if they sway outside of that any, they're gonna get backlash. Yeah, they're 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 taking risks anytime they do something, you know, that's 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 yeah. different, right? And this is definitely different. Um, this knife reminds me of like it's good different. Like, you know, a case knife a guy working on a ranch would carry. It reminds me of their Carhartt series for those of you who are in tune with, you know, kind of the case knives. And um, that's just based on the finish, and it kind of reminds me of a Carhartt series, but yeah. with a very high-end um, scale insert. So. Yeah, it's very cool. All right, so I guess that gets us to overall. Um, you know, look, this is this is not overall. This is not a slip joint channel. This is an EDC channel, frankly. Yeah. Really, I truly, mean, it's really nice in general. But 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 we we really focus in on sort of the EDC and. You know, so when you think about overall with all the different factors involved, this is going to be a seven out of ten for me. Um, and you know, doesn't mean anything about collectability. Any case knife has got a nine or a ten out of ten, and you know, some of their special right, Tony Bow sure. stuff has even higher collectability. Um, so yeah, it's probably a seven out of ten for me, um, and that's a really good number because you're talking about also factoring in 
whether or not I'm actually going to EDC this knife. And um, I own several of these and I don't really EDC them, um, but I think they're things of beauty. And, right, and they're more pocket. Wonderful to, to behold. Um, but yeah, certainly um, a solid seven out of 10 for me. Yeah. yeah, I think overall, you know, seven out of 10 is great. It, it really kind of balances all the things we talked about. Again, it's not something that you know, you carry on its own. Like it's always going to have a partner with it. It's, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a good little knife. And again, like we're comparing this knife to a lot of other knives that like, you know, there's a lot of knives that we keep laying around. And when you take a little case like this, I mean, that's like comparing a model T to a Corvette or a Ferrari. Yeah. And, and, and the thing is, is like to this day, when you, but in those terms, there's still, first of all, there's still Model T's out there running. And that's, secondly, that's they're right. still very desirable. Yes. And that is not a diss on no, it at, not all. at all. It is to say that we all have this strong desire to harken back to the past. You feel it. And maybe you haven't tapped into it and you haven't purchased a case knife. And you know what? If you haven't, you need to. Um, and you need to because you'll appreciate what it offers you yeah. in your pocket you'll find yourself going to it rather than going to, when you go, mm, can I pull this knife out right here? I'll, I'll say it this. It takes that away. You still can pull that knife out no matter where you are. I'll say this, when you pull a case knife out of your pocket to use, I think it gets more looks from the general public versus say a Medford. And the reason why I say that is because most people who aren't in the knife community don't know what a Medford is, but everybody has a memory of a case knife. Yeah, Their grandpa it's used it's it to clean out a pipe. It. They will the stick with it. Um, it's just tried and Maybe true. passed it down. Yeah, and you know, it's just one of those knives that it's just an American tradition. Yeah, love and, it. And you can't, you can't hate it. Yep, yeah, love it. Big, big knife fan of case and big collector. Yeah, of case, so. yeah. Yeah, I think they knocked it out of the park with that. Yeah. And it's just a... Uh, Really, really cool design. So, you know, I didn't get into a ton of, you know, walk and talk and kind of that deep slip joint um, sort of um, kind of expertise level stuff. And I certainly could have, um, you know, I didn't get into the blade centering because here's the reality with other brands, you're talking about this being an American made, this is a budget knife american made knife because you're getting something for how, how much is this 70 70 70 bucks it's you're getting Smoky something made in america from smoky mountain knife works that you can pass down through the generations and quite frankly if you are that concerned about all those minute details you know what you should be spending two or three hundred dollars on a knife because that's what it takes mm -hmm. um quite frankly to get to that point especially an american made um, knife. So, you know what? And the blade center happens to be good on this. And, you know, um, but at the end of the day, I think the fit and finish on this is really good. Um, I enjoy it. I'm certainly not overly snobby about my case knives. No. Um, because, you know what? Some of those little nuances of a case knife is part of owning it. I kind of like the fact that they still have the same machines making hey, them for many years. Model T's still have their nuances. Yeah. I mean, I think it's great. Yeah, I do too. Um, guys, if you want to see more on this uh, case knife other than this vlog, we'll have pictures of it up on our Instagram. Make sure you're following us at the clip point over there. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. We post a lot of content. We, you know, reach out to us. In yeah, the we, 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 we respond. We, we, yeah, we reply. We want to be in the, in the community. And, yeah. uh, you know, that's what's nice about our community. It brings everybody together from all walks of life. And you know what? Um, it's funny how many questions we get about what you think about this and, you know, I'm thinking about getting that and, and, you know, we have so much experience with different knives <laughs> and knife retailers. It's just nice to be able to, uh, to interact with you guys. So yeah, reach out to us on yeah. Instagram for sure. Uh, Facebook too. We're there. Um, if you guys want some of the cool clip point swag, we got a link in the bio to our shirt shop. There's shirts, there's mugs, that cool camp mug. Yep. Um, you know, if you're living that knife life, there's stuff there for you. Yeah. It's cool. uh, it's a lot of fun guys. So make sure you like subscribe. Hit us a comment in the you know comment section below yeah. and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Yeah, see you. Stay sharp.